So here's a fun question for you. Have you ever considered why it is that in pretty much every spiritual tradition, in some form or facet, there is some form of a branch of psychology or some sort of a exploration of knowledge, epistemology, and uh, gnosis? You know, these different forms of knowledge that we have. Why is it that they're inside of every spiritual tradition, which theoretically spiritual experience is direct, it's experiential, right? It's not necessarily cognitive, yet every spiritual tradition has its own branch of psychology, its own form of, you know, really looking at the nature of the mind and what the mind is and how the mind processes information. Have you ever wondered that? Or have you ever wondered perhaps um, why it is that th that in spiritual circles, if you're into kind of modern new age spirituality, you'll see a lot of discussion about psychological stuff, about Jungian ideas or about, you know, uh, just the nature of mind. Why does the mind even fucking matter when we're talking about spirit and spirituality? Why does the mind even is it practical to talk about it? What's the point? So I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but I've certainly kind of spent my own time really looking at, you know, how is this relevant? How do these things connect? What's the point of psychology in the scope of this larger spiritual experience that transcends mind, right? And I think that there are many ways we could answer this question if I'm to be fair about it, but I'm going to give you my interpretation, my understanding, which again, is based in NLP. And, uh, and I'm going to start to show you why it's so important, why having some sense of a grasp of how your own mind works and your own psychology works and what creates meaning internally in the mind. You know, what is the, the mechanism that creates meaning? Once we start to understand this, then we can leverage that to start to reprogram ourselves in the way that we want to be, in the way we want to feel, and what we want to experience. So in order to do that, first I wanted to kind of put you in touch and in control of your own mind a little bit today. Kind of put your hands on the steering wheel and, and just teach you about the ABCs of how the mind works. So buckle up and uh, let's talk about it a bit here. In uh, the videos I've been doing, I've been thinking a lot about how I want to communicate all the content that I have to share with you guys. And I know I've mentioned this numerous times. And uh, so one of the things I've decided to do with my videos is to start to kind of give you the juiciest bits, to start to kind of chunk everything down to these little bite size, smaller, more practical, but also hard hitting most effective, highest leverage kind of pieces of information that I can convey to you that are really going to make the difference in your life. My hope is to really build a community here that is deeply spiritually centered and aligned and receiving wisdom from the inside and then knows exactly how to turn that wisdom into lasting personal change in our own lives and into better behavior, better action, better alignment with who we want to be rather than alignment with who we used to be. And so I really want to empower you as I've been learning and discovering and studying my ass off lately on exactly how to transform and how to shift the mind, how to shift the emotions. Uh, I want to share all of that with you and I want to really give you kind of like, I want to filter out all the nonsense for you and just give you the juiciest little tidbits. So. I've been working hard at that, and um, this is really kind of a, a very basic piece of information I'm going to share with you. But once you start to wrap your head around it, once you start to integrate it into your knowledge, into your body of knowledge, and it's not just this weird, interesting little piece of information, but it becomes this thing that you get, that you grok, that you've absorbed into your cells, it will absolutely change your life. This is, again, the beginning of how to control your own mind, the beginning of how to reprogram your own mind, the beginning of how to understand more deeply how others experience life. There's so many ways to apply what I'm about to show you that it's, it's mind-boggling. You're going to be so 
wonderfully empowered as you start to use this. So let's go ahead and explore the what's called an NLP, V-A-K or A-V-K, or you could rearrange those three letters any way you like, but the point is that we have what's called visual, auditory, and kinesthetic aspects of the mind. Probably a more accurate way of explaining this to you to set it up clearly so that you are starting off fresh in the right way is this is what's called a representational system of the mind. So the idea in NLP and hypnosis is that we have basically the five senses that we use to externally experience and perceive the world through, right? So we have, you know, vision, we have sound, we have touch, we have taste, and we have smell. One, two, three, four, five, right? And these five senses make up the input channels through which we experience everything and learn everything in life that we've ever experienced or learned. Uh, so the representational system is again how we represent the external world on the inside. So the representational system is basically the five senses uh, turned inward. So if we have five senses that reach outward in the world, they also reach inward into our brain, into the mind, and teach us, and, and, and we, we use these on the inside to represent what it is that we're experiencing externally internally so that there's kind of a coherence between real world experience and how we're processing that on the inside. And so the rep system, uh, you know, is five input channels on the inside, just like it would be on the outside. But typically speaking, when we look at the way most of us use our minds to represent reality, right? The way most of us process information internally what they found in NLP and, and hypnosis is that, generally speaking, most people actually only use three of the five. Those three, again, are visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. Kinesthetic is just another word that uh, encapsulates the experience of touch or sensation. So I'm gonna go through these kind of really briefly here, but they're fairly self-explanatory. So, if you're exploring your own internal experience of mind, and by the way, if you're not, obviously you're not driving or doing anything dangerous, feel free to close your eyes while we talk about this and explore for yourself. You know, try it out. See how does it feel? What composes thoughts internally for me? How do I think? What's the language? What's the sensory language of my thinking, of my process of the world? Most people don't know this. Most people know that they think obviously, but they don't know how they think. They don't know what the method, what the processes that th they're using on the inside are that enable them to think. What's the channel they're thinking through, right? So we're becoming kind of meta aware here. We're becoming aware of our own awareness. Uh, and through that, we're able to start to then utilize it consciously rather than having it be this kind of unconscious way that we've been processing the world in the past, right? So, okay, so we have visual, auditory, kinesthetic, V-A-K or A-V-K. Uh, and so first and most obvious is visual. And this basically, you know, some people, this, this can be a little controversial, uh, oddly enough, but some people process the world visually. So when you close your eyes and you're thinking about a person or a place or an experience or you know, an idea or an abstract concept, some of you will process that in images. You'll either see pictures, you'll see diagrams, you'll see shapes, you'll see colors, you'll see maybe movies, maybe stills, maybe black and whites, maybe rich, vivid colors. There's all kinds of different ways that that visual input uh, can happen. But the point is that it does happen at a visual level for a lot of people. Um, I want to make it clear here, and I'll, I'll, I might reiterate this in this video here, that everybody has all these capacities. Just that some people's brains have learned to dominantly use one over the other. And these dominant differences in how we process information internally 
actually radically give us different experiences internally and different skills, different abilities, different capacities, you know? For example, if you're a graphic artist, you know, it might be useful for your brain to be more dominant in processing the world visually, right? Uh, if you're a musician or public speaker or writer, it's obviously going to be very useful to be able to process the world uh, auditorially, right? And if you're an MMA fighter, if you are an athlete, if you are um, a yoga instructor, it might be very useful to process the world uh, kinesthetically, for example. So different, you know, emphases on ABK have different kind of skills or empowerments that go with them. So obviously, the better you get at all, and again, everyone is capable of all of these, it's just which is dominant, which is more used. Obviously, the more you use all of them, the more well-rounded you will be uh, when it comes to processing information on the inside. Anyways, getting back to the topic here. Um, so we have auditory and then we have, sorry, we have visual, then we have auditory. So let's talk about auditory a little bit. Auditory is obviously sound, right? So sound is not only uh, things you've heard, right? Music, like can you remember a song very easily on the inside? It could also be things like uh, things that you've read. And if you're thinking in language, if you're thinking in like, it, when you read, are, do you, <laughs> and then you remember the book, are you remembering the actual words on the page that you saw? Are you remembering whole chunks of paragraphs? Are, are you remembering the, the auditory track of you translating that to audio in your head? That'd be the difference between a visual and an auditory person, right? Well, not person, but visual or auditory processing. So you stop to think about it here. We have visual, we have auditory. So auditory could be self-talk. It could be uh, things you've heard outside yourself. Uh, and it can just be kind of linguistic processing. And then we have kinesthetic. Now, kinesthetic is interesting in that it kind of expresses in two very distinct ways here. So let's talk about that a little bit more. So with kinesthetic, we've got essentially two different types of kinesthetics. So we have sensation, right? Which would be, what are the feelings that your body feels? The, you know, the tightnesses, the pressures, the comfort, the, you know, the uh, chills up your spine, the, you know, pleasure signals, the pain signals, the discomfort signals, the comfort signals. That would be sensation, right? We also experience kinesthetic in the form of emotion. So essentially what an emotion is, is when we have a thought that creates a meaning that's powerful for us, whether it's positive or negative, when you have a powerful meaning, that creates a bo corresponding bodily response, right? That bodily response that is kind of the embodiment of whatever it is you just thought, right? That registering in the body as sensation is kinesthetic. So believe it or not, this is, it's a little more rare, but some people out there process the world primarily through their kinesthetics. So they think in terms of body sensations, if you will. So these are all just the mind working in different aspects, you know, and, and yeah, so you might be thinking, what about olfactory, you know, smell or gustatory, right? Uh, taste. Well, I would say, you know, the, the kind of the, the, the standard line in NLP is that these are very rare in the Western world. You will find, you know, people who are maybe perfumers process the world via smell primarily, or someone who's maybe a chef might be really, you know, really skillful when it comes to processing information gustatorially by a taste. And definitely all of us are, have the capacity to make meaning at that level. Hence, we have language like, um, I smell a rat, for example, or um, that's a, a, a sweet and tasty song you just played me, et cetera, et cetera, right? So you start to see how this transfers into the way that we think, and that transfers into our language. So there are linguistic kind of 
ways of uncovering what our representations are. But I'm kind of digressing here. The main thing I just want to convey to you today is that you have a representational system. So you have a way of representing life and your thoughts and the world on the inside. And that representational system is basically made up of primarily three of the five senses on the internal. So that would be visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. And it's the combination of these, you know, three to five processing channels on the inside that allows us to make representations. So this is the structure of meaning in the nervous system. So things like beliefs, things like emotions, things like um, ideas, things like abilities and skills, you know, what you might start to find as you explore this. And I would encourage you to just start to explore your internal reality a bit and start to recognize how your VAK system works because it's going to be different for every one of you. And notice, you know, when you're feeling good, when, when things are going right, you know, what's the dominant channel that your mind is processing information through? When you are doing something that you're really good at, let's say you're a good writer and you're in the flow and you're writing, what is the dominant channel that your mind is processing that information through? When you are sleepy at the end of the day, you're in a different state, what is the, again, what are, what's the VAK there? When you are upset, what's the VAK there? When you are ecstatic, what's the VAK there? And what you might find is that these things shift depending on what mode you're in, on what you're doing, on what's required of you, on what type of functioning your brain has to do. You may also find that you're very consistent from context to context and that you have actually very similar way of processing the world no matter what you're doing. And if that's the case, that alone is valuable, interesting information when it comes to learning how to reprogram your own mind, take control of your own nervous system, right? So I wanted to just kind of leave it there for you. There's so much more we can do with VAK. Uh, there's so much, it's, these are ABCs, these are building blocks from which you've created your entire experience. So I want to just kind of, again, give you these basics for you to play with and explore and understand. Then from there, we can start to build upon that in subsequent videos and information. So circling back around to the first thing I asked you, or not exactly the first thing, but the question I asked at the beginning of this video, which is, uh, why does every spiritual path have a significant psychological component to what it teaches? So let's just kind of end the video exploring this thought for a moment, and then hopefully that will kind of give you some insight. So I would like to encourage you, or maybe challenge you, you know, depending on what kind of experiences you've had, you know, whether it's meditation, psychedelic experiences, uh, things you've learned, you know, uh, retreats you've gone on, anything like that. I would like to challenge you to find any experience you've had, no matter how far out, no matter how deep, no matter how profound and mystical and transcendent, no matter how much of maybe your rational, logical brain processing was offline, I would like to challenge you to tell me or think of an example that didn't involve some sort of visual, auditory, or kinesthetic experience. And, you know, I, this is an inquiry that I have applied to myself. And I started to really just, you know, challenge because I really believed for the longest time that there are these kinds of spiritual experiences that transcend mind and are, uh, you know, holistic, shall we say, that are about the oneness of the universe so deeply that mind and even just even the one location that my body is in it's kind of irrelevant, you know, when you're, when you are one with the universe, you know, the, any particular location becomes kind of irrelevant, right? I've had these really big, deep, profound mystical experiences and 
After learning AVK, I started to think about those in terms of AVK, and I started to, you know, really challenge myself. And to be honest, I could not think of a single thing, no matter how far out, no matter how deep, no matter how profound and healing and mystical and unitive and reflected by symmetry and synchronicity and life around me. Couldn't think of a single thing I'd ever experienced or seen or learned that happened outside of the visual, the auditory, and the kinesthetic channels. You know, my deepest, most far out, weird psychedelic visions, none of it. All of it obviously includes shapes, geometries, colors, tones, frequencies, sounds, feelings, waves of experience. All of that is encoded and really being processed through the mind, through our perceptual capacities, right? And so where I'm at now, and again, this is always subject to change because I believe that we should always be honestly seeking to really uh, refine and update our maps of reality as we get new information. So this is always subject to, to change. I could decide from some experience I've had that actually there is a limit to you know, AVK, but as far as I understand it right now, the human mind is always processing life as this primary filter that is your interface through which you're experiencing all of life. And so because of that, all our experiences are part of this VAK processing stream that we do which is really VAK, OG, olfactory and gustatory. So, but VAK being the primary ones again. So if that's the case, if everything you've ever experienced, everything you've ever seen, everything you've ever learned, known, touched, taste, done, lives inside of these channels, then it's useful to become aware of these channels as the primary ways that you're processing all of life, including your most deep, profound, transcendent experiences. From there, once we start to just recognize the depth, so this is, this is why, this is why the psychology, I know I'm kind of get excited and start kind of on these fragmented ideas here. Hopefully you're keeping up and I'm making sense. So this is why spirituality, this is a blind spot, honestly, in the spiritual path. Most spiritual paths don't take into account the way that the mind processes. And this is why they make attempts at trying to have some sort of a model of psychology. Uh, because they are they're doing their best. But a lot of times, there's just a lot of assumption built into kind of not acknowledging that there's this filter through which everything we've ever known is being, you know, passed through. And that we can't ever have an experience outside of that filter, right? We can change the filter. You can adapt the filter. You could, um, you know, you could blindfold yourself and go through life with just your ears and your sense of touch for a day. I mean, there, there are ways to play with the filter, but you can't not pass information through the filter, right? And so I want to make that point and just kind of leave that there for you to like deeply consider kind of what, what are the kind of philosophical epistemological Gnostic Im implications of having these input channels that is everything we know. And then also I wanted to just kind of make the point to you that once we start to learn how to play with these input channels, because on the inside, you know, externally, you know, we could debate about whether or not reality is real and objective and hard or not, you know, like that's obviously up for debate right now in the world with you know, simulation theory and all that. And we'll be talking about that on this channel for sure. But on the inside, this is a much more clearly malleable set of experiences. So whatever it is you experience on the inside, you know, whether that's, again, some sort of problem or issue like anxiety or depression or fear or dissatisfaction or numbness or disconnect or 
you know, something blissful, like you go through states of euphoria and ecstasy and you go through states of profound insight and fascination and you feel super content and filled up with joy and peace or super present and alive and fully here. No matter what it is for you, you know, these things on the inside, believe it or not, are much more malleable. On the inside, the way we're processing is largely a function of the mind and the imagination and kind of the imaging capacity to project out these representations. And we can play with representations in different ways, create new meanings inside of ourselves, create new experiences inside of ourselves, create new learnings, new understandings, new capacities inside of ourselves. When we do that, suddenly we change. So I'm going to leave it there for now. As you can tell, this is something, again, I'm shooting off the cuff here. I'm just kind of riffing. Uh, I get excited about this topic because it's deep and it's big and it means a lot to me. So hopefully this is kind of really connected and made sense and been coherent and clear for you. And uh, hopefully it's kind of sparked maybe some imagination or an insight or, you know, just kind of got you you know, feeling something. Maybe this is resonating for you in some way. I would love to know. So feel free to just comment below. Let me know if this is making an impact for you, if this is connecting, because I want to continue teaching you how to reprogram your own mind, how to take ownership and control of yourself, how to um, begin to really shape shift and free yourself and to really bridge the gap between maybe what you've experienced in your meditations or your psychedelic experiences and how you live your day to day so that you're more closely aligned to what you know you're capable of experiencing. So anyways, much love to you all. I hope you're doing well. I have so much more content to share. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know how this lands for you. I'll see you guys in the next video. Much love.